Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Welcome, everybody, to the Screw the Commute episode number eight. Uh, this is a great podcast tonight. We've got a uh, couple lovebirds on here. And I'm going to tell you about Cher and Bill Holton here in a moment. Let's take a moment for today's sponsor. It's the Distance Learning School, the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. Don't even think about retraining yourself or sending your kids to college until you check out our webinar. I don't want you wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars and putting yourself and your kids under crushing debt. We'll have the webinar in the show notes at screwthecommute.com, and I'll tell you more about this later. Now let's get to the main event. Since 1984, Cher and Bill Holton have been helping corporate clients be extraordinary in leadership, teamwork, and bottom line results. Their keynote speeches, turbo training, team building, and coaching sessions are practical, research supported, and lots of fun to boot. They are prolific authors and ardent believers in practicing what they teach. They take what they say, what they call Indiana Jones vacations, all right, like whitewater rafting, skydiving, fire walking, and ballroom dancing. You don't see those two together too much. But I was thinking about this when I saw this, and I think if you really wanted to take it to the next level, you skydive while you're on fire, and <laughs> I guarantee you'll dance on the way down to the ground. <laughs> because they like to continually stretch their limits. So, uh, Sharon, Bill, welcome. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Yeah, so uh, tell everybody uh, what you do. We help organizations maximize their leadership abilities, and our goal is to create extraordinary leaders who can facilitate employee engagement and great teamwork. Now, have either one of you or both of you had regular jobs before <laughs> oh yes <laughs> oh, we yeah. both have both all right let's hear, let's hear about them well um i uh i worked for the postal service uh for uh 11 years and um until i found out that um the people i, w- I was hiring i was in hr the people i was hiring uh, it occurred to me one day that uh, i could do what they do and oftentimes uh, better and I thought, well, why would I want to hire them when, when I can do it? So uh, we began looking around uh, to get out of government. Both of us were in government at the time and uh, looking at, uh, quite frankly, uh, self-employment. And so I was working with the government. That's where we met. We oh, met you, playing post you, office. You met playing post office. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> And then I left the post office and went to Westinghouse. And when I got an offer, that was what we were looking around for. And then when I got an offer at Westinghouse for a promotion that would move us to Pittsburgh, Bill and I looked at each other and said, it's time for us to start our own business. And that's when we left. So so this was a joint decision. Were you married, both married at the time or had you been? We were. Yes, we were married then. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was the moment, huh? Pittsburgh, that, that get it to you. The, uh, yes. It, anything's better than living in Pittsburgh for us. <laughs> now you're killing me because I, I'm from outside of Pittsburgh, a little town called Claysville, where it was named after Henry Clay. And he didn't really um, like sleep. There was only 500 people in the whole town. There still is only 500 people. And and he didn't uh, actually sleep there. His horse took a dump there on the way through. And that was that was good enough for us. <laughs> Well, my dad grew up in Trafford, so okay. you probably know where that is. Well, it's another place. And, and okay. actually, uh, technically, I started out as a hooker in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, that's, a, hooker. that's the absolute truth. I started out as a hooker in Pittsburgh. Uh, the uh, One of the few jobs that I did have in college was uh, for the U.S. Steelworks, where I hooked overhead cranes onto oh. the steel I-beams, <laughs> and my job class was hooker. <laughs> So I was a hooker in Pittsburgh. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder you didn't want to move there. So, uh, 
So uh, what would you say to someone who's thinking about leaving their job and starting a business? Well, one of the first things we say, Tom, uh, and we still abide by this after 36 years in business um, in self-employment, um, is to define the lifestyle that you want and then wrap your work around it. Ah, okay. Now, uh, that's that's a good concept, but uh, at the moment, that person is thinking, oh, my God, I got this paycheck, and then I'm not going to have a paycheck. I mean, how not that a pretty tough decision for a lot of people? It's a tough decision, and it's very scary. You have to be willing to be a little risk taker when you start your own business, of course. And if you have money in the bank, that's awesome. We didn't have as much in our ba in the bank as people would recommend, but we had a real love for what we were going to do, and we really knew the business very well. And so I think it's important to know what you want to do and be prepared to one of our credos, again, is spend in the good times like it's the lean times so that you can prepare for that. That's a great point. So say that again. Spend in the good times like it's the lean times? Right. You should right. make a poster of that. That's, that's a really, <laughs> no, that is really a great thing uh, uh, for for people to think about because if so, money starts coming in, all of a sudden they're, they're rich and then they blow it all. <laughs> <laughs> and when yeah. the when it starts raining, <laughs> uh, it it really pours. So oh, one other thing we yeah. we've learned too is that you're on total commission, and your commission becomes effective when you do. <laughs> <laughs> These are all great sayings. You should have a your own quote book. Those are awesome <laughs> sayings it's for something, entrepreneurs. Yeah. And something else we did too, Tom, is is um, at the point that we made the decision to uh, go on our own. Um, uh, Cher uh, was the one who took the first step. Uh, I was doing a lot of research. Cher was doing a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, presentations. And so uh, I stayed uh, at, at the job I had working for a power company. Uh, and I planned on joining her in, in, in uh, three, four years after she got um, settled. Uh, and after a year, uh, I was able to leave my corporate job and uh, join her. And that was in 1983, and we haven't looked back since. Wow, is that is that great? Mm. So, uh, have you ever gotten screwed in business? That is all right. Don't 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 get don't go get a hotel room here while we're talking. All right. <laughs> yeah, remember we have the executive suite right here. At our house. <laughs> that's, that's right. So, uh, any any time you've gotten screwed in business, and what'd you do about it? It's been rare, but we have a few times. And one of the ones that really stands out for us is when we we have always prided ourselves on providing lots of good customized information for mm -hmm. our clients. Right. And we had one request for a proposal for team building, and we gave them a, a pretty extensive proposal. And they turned around, took what we gave them, and did it themselves. Oh, that's, that sucks. What did you do about it? Anything? Um, we didn't do anything about that because we just figured live and learn, but the, we did learn. We are quick learners. That's another tip for anybody going into business. Yeah, so so basically you gave away the farm to people we that did. were unscrupulous. Yeah. yeah, we have since learned that we are limited in what we, we limit what we share initially, and if they want a detailed proposal, we will charge for it. Oh, I and see. if they use us, they don't have to pay, but if they don't use us, we got at least got paid for the oh, information. Good, good. Uh, that's a good point for everybody out there because uh, people will run you ragged and they'll just try to get ideas knowing that you want the job. So, so you just can't let that happen. Now, um, anything funny has happened throughout your business career? Well, actually, yeah. And, and this actually happened to share on a presentation we were doing in South Carolina. I was, I gave a presentation and I was introduced, I was the keynote speaker. And when I was introduced, that I, it was a big, it was supposed to be motivational, inspirational. And the person who introduced me said, before we introduce our speaker, we have to share some information. And they talked, it was to salespeople, and they shared a whole new plan for the salespeople that was going to affect everybody's pay. Oh. And then they said, and now our speaker, Cher Holton. So uh. I came on. Now, this isn't the funny part. This was the miserable part. Right, right. I came on and I did my thing and it went okay, but it was horrible. I couldn't wait to get out of there. So we left as soon as we could get out of Dodge. <laughs> 
We're in the car driving. We're about an hour, an hour down, the road. down the road. And all of a sudden, I realize I left my briefcase back in the hotel where oh. the speech was given. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. So you had, to walk, actually, you had to walk earned, back through the gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, actually, I did not because Bill did it for me, and he became husband and partner, business partner of the year that day. <laughs> <laughs> and so they didn't know him. Is that right? No. Oh, so he in, could get in and get out. <laughs> snuck in, grabbed it. He knew where it was, and he goes back in the car, and he didn't even say, oh, he, he just was so sweet and so understanding and I felt so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, give, give the listeners some tips about uh, working at home. You want to start or you want me no, to start? start? Okay. I, we would say when you work at home, one of the key things is to compartmentalize. Uh, it's a lot harder to, because there's, you, you're, everything's available to you and you can like get what you mean, uh, the refrigerator and ice cream. <laughs> oh yeah, the washing machine, the refrigerator. Your neighbors and family who think because you work at home that you're not working. Uh -huh. uh, you have to really compartmentalize, and we don't necessarily set work hours, but we have very specific offices that are only used for work, and so that's where we do most of our work. Uh, to keep it separate from what we do. In and we house. highly recommend that, Tom, because when you're in your quote unquote epicenter, your office, um, you get into the habit of seeing yourself uh, at work. Uh, and you walk in there with a different frame of mind. You leave your quote unquote work office with a different frame of mind because uh, it's easy to get distracted, as Sharon mentioned before about uh, the laundry and dishes and that kind of thing. Uh, you don't do dishes when you're at work. <laughs> and uh, you really do have to compartmentalize and make sure that um, you're actually working and doing something that's going to uh, earn you the income uh, while you're at work. Yeah, but that, that ruins my whole podcast. I mean, you had to commute <laughs> from one room to the other room. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great commute. There's no traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've had uh, Good Morning America on in the morning and seen the information about traffic and just looked at Bill and said, well, I guess we start our commute to the office. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. That's uh, what our book cover is. It's got it's, it's a big screw going into a bunch of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Although there awesome. is one thing that we do, and we've done this ever since uh, we've been in business. Uh, we bought and, and continue to, to uh, invest in uh, an expensive car because we commute to the client. Right. Uh, the clients don't mm -hmm. come to our office, and what they, uh, of course, they see us in a nice car. That's not car. really a commute, though. I mean, you're going to a client. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. right. And it's That's not right. like That's everyday drudgery going back and forth. No way. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so we... you get a nice car out of it, and you can justify it for tax purposes <laughs> and everything. It's it's really part of the part of the deal. It is. No. The other thing we have about working at home, when, at least for the two of us, because we are married and work together, is having very clear roles about who's responsible for what, which makes we talk about everything, but we each of us has our area that is the we get to be the final decision maker on, and that's our focus. So, all right, all right now I want to get into that a little deeper, but first I want to ask you: Do you uh, in this in this compartment? mentalization that you talked about um do you actually dress for work like you were going to a, a work or do you still go in there in your pjs nah uh, i wear jeans and we we don't usually we're not in pjs because we do get dressed but we don't dress like if we were going to an office because being comfortable in our in my opinion is really yeah. important and it's one of the benefits, which, you know, here's another little thing, another little tip is so often when you have your own business, you focus on all the things you don't have, like the benefits and the days off and regular pay. But what we want to do is be sure and acknowledge the benefits you do have and not feel guilty about them. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great point. And what was the thing I I interrupted you on and I forgot <laughs> forget <laughs> you were making some point and I oh clear roles yeah roles. yeah oh yeah yeah I want to know yeah. uh, so what if the other one really disagrees does it turn into an argument or is it just oh we decided a long time ago that uh, I'm the decision maker on this thing and just shut up 
<laughs> um, actually, 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 that's right. We, yeah. we yeah. I have made that decision. It's a business decision, and um, yeah, whoever is 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 the main person for that particular role has the final decision. We sure. discuss it and we disagree, uh, but the um, the person yeah. who has uh, overall responsibility for that makes the final decision. And, okay, and we so kept that for thirty years. Yeah, so did work. you ever uh, uh, regret agreeing to a certain role and giving it away to the other? <laughs> oh no! I think I don't think so. I haven't. No, no, uh, me neither. Um, We've shifted roles sometimes as businesses shifted or things have changed. Okay. But, um, no. All right. And, do you and, ever argue? Oh yeah, not argue, fight. We're not big fighters. I would say disagree, but, but not have, argue. Yeah. And at, uh, it, and another thing, we highly recommend to people uh, if if they're working together with spouse or a significant other, a friend. Um, is to do not compete with one another. Yeah. Because, Bill, you'll lose, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no, his nickname for me is the franchise. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Now, uh, you got to tell me about the origin of your name, Bill. I just realized after knowing you all these years that it has one L in Bill. Was this well, a typo on your birth certificate or something? Or what? Well, what is that? Is that a... Yeah, when... when when Cher worked for Westinghouse, they were really big uh, with um, uh, doing more with less. And so I just happened to think with the quality of movement that um, B-I-L-L was a bit long. So uh, I dropped the other L. It still sounds the same. Uh, B-I-L is short for billion. And that has a nice ring to it. Perfect. And I've taken the, the ill out of my name. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Now, so... Um, what, what do you think is the worst part about working for yourself? You know what I think it is? I think that because we work in the same place together, if things go downhill or if you're going through a slump, it's really easy for both of you to get depressed at the same time. <laughs> okay. And so one can drag the other down. We actually have dealt with that. We created a, you know how in basketball they show who has the next, um, who owns the ball at the next tie ball yep. and they shift back and arrow. forth. We have that kind of thing on a bulletin board and whoever has the arrow is the one who's responsible to stay positive. Uh, even if we don't <laughs> like it, you got to, and then we switch back and forth. <laughs> and, and this is for 30 years. You've been uh, using these methods, right? Oh yeah. 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 Well, that we learned that we needed a method first. And then as we realized we would both get down and it's hard when you both get down it to keep it, upbeat and positive uh so it, it was really useful to have one person ensure that happened and what really helps us enjoy working at home is that whenever we do go to uh the corporate client to present uh, that kind of thing to, to team build um we can't wait to get back out of there we are so happy to have the environment that we've established at home beautiful yeah. beautiful <laughs> well, you're a good team that's uh, you walk your talk so um so what's coming up? What are you promoting now? You have a new book out, don't you? Yes. Thank yes. You. yes. It's a brand new book. It's called Extraordinary Leadership. Mm -hmm. And we developed it because we have been teaching leadership for quite a while. And the one thing we noticed was that even when leaders knew the tools to use and use them, there were some leaders that excelled and were superstars and other leaders who it just didn't come across well. They couldn't pull it off. And so we started asking why and did a lot of research and scientific research along with it, like psychology and neuroscience and even some quantum physics study that supports what we're learning. And from that, we found that there are seven core abilities that we all have within us. And if leaders can tap into those core abilities and use that to underwrite the skills they're using, they come across much more effectively. And so this book is all about those seven core abilities. Well, that's that's beautiful. And uh, we'll have the link to it uh, for you listeners in there in the uh, show notes at screwthecommute.com, screwthecommute.com. <laughs> and uh, we'll have, uh, this is, uh, by the way, this is episode number eight. So if you're looking for it on the website. Um, so we got to take a brief break for a message from our sponsor. And we will be right back with uh, Bill and Cher telling us how they stay motivated and what a typical day looks like for them. We'll be right back. 
Today, almost 2 billion of you will go online, retrieving over 100 billion searches for information, goods, and services, and 6 million of you will view a page on the internet before this commercial is over. The world has changed, and so has the way we do business. At the Internet Marketing Training Center, you can study online at your pace to fit your schedule, and you can graduate with the skills and knowledge to compete in the global marketplace or start your own home-based business. Call us today or go online at imtcva.org because it's about time. Yours. Okay, we're back. And uh, uh, Bill and Cher, so what's a typical day look like for massive 30-year screw the commuters? <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, generally uh, uh, bracket our day, uh, we call it parentheses, our day with meditation. We, we, we meditate individually. Uh, but we meditate together as well. And then we start our day and end it with uh, a meditation, um, uh, about a half hour, 45 minute meditation. Uh, if we get really busy, then we meditate for an hour. Twice a uh, day. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's amazing what power that has, though. It really centers you and uh, keeps you focused on now, what uh, needs to be done. Now, that's a skill, right? Because... Um, uh, you know, if I if I just sit down for five minutes and try to rest, my mind is going 100 miles an hour, and I'm not really resting. So, no. how do you learn okay. how to meditate? You you practice, practice, practice. Matter of fact, we call uh, meditation uh, an experience versus an experience. Uh, experiences is when you use the 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 five main senses and connect with the outer world. Uh, uh, for meditation, you go inside, we call it a laser focus moment, and you concentrate on uh, either a word or a phrase, uh, uh, a candle or or uh, the, an I am statement, that kind of thing, a positive statement. Uh, it takes practice, and uh, when you have an intruding thought, um, uh, we call them uh, uh, chatter bombs when they, uh, happen. Uh, you just allow them to come in and go. Uh, brush them off like you would a piece of lint off your clothing, and then continue to uh, to meditate in the silence. What was that kind of statement you said? And I, I am. What, what? I am statement. Oh, I A M. Yes. Okay. I am. So it's yes. like an affirmation, or it or? is Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I am calm and collected. Mm -hmm. I am at peace. Those kind of things. <laughs> and if you say if you say those in your mind, then your mind is focusing on that. And we like to tell people with meditation or laser focus moments, we teach this to our corporate leaders, but we call it laser focus moment rather than meditation in the corporate world. Right, right. And, and really part of the process is learning how to recognize your mind chatter. We call it chatter bombs and let it go that that's part of the experience. So, or experience. So not to fight that, but rather let it, help your energy of learning how to focus. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I need some pra practice on this stuff because I, I, my mind is going a hundred miles an hour all day long, but, mm -hmm. but these I am statements did, did kind of remind me that I have this comedian friend and, uh, he was uh, at a hotel getting ready to do his, his comedy routine. And, uh, he does affirmations. And so he was in the bathroom in a stall thinking that he was in there by himself uh -oh. <laughs> and and he said this is gonna be the best one yet <laughs> and there was people in there. <laughs> so so uh <laughs> you might uh, have to be careful when and where you exactly, use it <laughs> right so uh, uh do you have any parting thoughts for all these screwballs out there that want to be like you and do what you do and and uh, make their own way I would say that they really want to be like them, not like us. And to, to remember that lots of people will give them advice and it's important to listen to it all, but then decide what's really going to work for them because there are lots of different ways to do your own business. And if you try to do it like somebody tells you to do it, you're not going to be as happy. And my parting thought to, to the folks is that, um, your your success, your business success, your personal success is not so much limited by unanswered questions as it is unquestioned answers. Mm. So we encourage people to, to question all unquestioned answers in whatever field you're in 
because a lot of people make assumptions and just follow follow the herd. The only problem with following the herd is that you will probably end up stepping in something you don't want to step in. Or, or <laughs> going to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> you <know>, really? <laughs> right along with everybody. So how does, uh, how does everybody uh, that's listening to this uh, reach you if they'd uh, like to reach out and check out your product? You have a lot more products and services than just the new book. So I want to make sure they... Uh, they see that in the show notes, but how, how do they reach you if, they, uh, if they'd like to get in touch or well, maybe hire you, you too? Uh, Absolutely. We would love to talk mm-hmm. with them about that. And they can co- go online to holtonconsulting.com. Okay. We'll have that in the show notes, uh, Holton and, Consulting. And they can reach us by email at share, C-H-E-R, at holtonconsulting.com. Or- and Holton is spelled H-O-L-T-O-N, right? That is correct. Thank you. H O L T O N. We'll have it all all in the show notes. Um, So, um, so this has been a lot of fun. I love you too. Uh, You little lovebirds. Uh, Uh It's uh, mutual. We feel the same way about you. It's amazing (laughs) for us. We're so glad to know you. That story, uh, 30 years and, uh, and jumping out of the post office. I love it. Love it. Love it. (laughs) So, everybody, uh, this is episode eight of Screw the Commute. Make sure you stop over to screwthecommute.com. Check out the show notes for Cher and Bill, and check out their new leadership book. Also, uh, over there, we have a uh, section where you can leave a review uh, of the podcast. So, uh, if you click, if you have a good review to leave, you click on the good link. If you if you didn't like it, we have a bad link that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> and you click on that, and uh, or we send you to somebody else's podcast that we don't like. So, so keep that in mind, and um, don't forget to check out imtcva.org if you really want to take a high-level education for you or uh, your nephews, nieces, your kids, and you can get a. A really in-demand education in about six months and not be crushed in debt for the rest of your life. So absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, these these two yes. know all about it. We've so, done it. It's awesome. We highly recommend it. There you go. So uh, thanks, Bill. Thanks, Cher, and we will catch you on the flip flop.